Hello ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lewis is here. Welcome to yet another interesting video about the saturated and the unsaturated fats. I understand that most of us have had a chance to read widely about these cooking oils and then you ask yourself, why do I constantly tell you to drop the seed oils and start using the animal fats for your cooking? So today we have those answers. I also have to introduce to you uh, the concept of the polyunsaturated fatty acids the concepts of the trans and the cis fats, what are these things? What are they really? Are they any, in any way or form important? Why do we always uh, come across them? And are these fats responsible for heart attacks? So welcome on board and sit back and enjoy this one. Now, this is the structure of fats. So generally we have fats, whether the cooking oil, the seed oil, the vegetable oils or the animal fats, all of them are fats. The difference is how they exist. Now, this is how they come in terms of the chemical structure. Understand that we have this head here. So you see this that has the acidic uh, structure here. That is what we call the glycerol head. And then we have these chains here. And these chains are the ones that actually determine the saturation or the unsaturation of these fats. So understand we have bigger classes of this. We have the saturated fats and the unsaturated fats. What is the difference? You see this structure has a chain that has carbon atoms and every single carbon atom is bonded to four hydrogen atoms. When it has four hydrogen atoms, it is a complete carbon atom, it is very stable. That's what you call saturation. So if all this, even if it's bonded to other carbon here, but the most important is we are going for the hydrogen ions here because the ones that will actually determine the saturation and the saturation. So this here are the hydrogen ions bonded to this carbon. Now, if these bonds are single bonds, that is what we call saturation. Why are they saturated? Because they have the maximum number of uh, hydrogen ions bonded to that carbon, and they make it very stable because they hold it closer so that we don't have any reaction going on here. They are not easy to actually release their hydrogen ion. That's what we call saturation. On the other hand, if we, we have double bonds existing here, so if let's say we have here a double bond, we have a double bond. This will have one, two, three, four. One, two, three. So we'll remove one here. So if you have a double bond here, in that structure, in these chains, either of these chains, that is what we call unsaturation. Now, if it is a single double bond, one double bond, we call that monounsaturated. But if you have multiple double bonds, all over you have double bonds in this structure, that is what we call Poly and saturation. So it poly means many uh, many double bonds. So poly means many, and then unsaturation means the double bonds. So poly and saturation or poly and saturated fatty acids basically means a fatty acid that has multiple double bonds. Now the challenge comes in here. When we introduce a double bond in this structure, that double bond causes the structure to bend. You see this? Like we have this chain that is straight because of the single bonds, and then we introduce a double bond. It causes the structure to bend. And I want you to see, this is how we represent it in a diagram form. Okay, so we have the head that is glycerol head, and then we have the tails that are basically fatty acid chains. Now, these fatty acid chains, when you introduce a double bond, they start to bend. And when they bend, that makes them very unstable. That makes them liquid instead. That's why most of the unsaturated uh, fatty acids are actually liquid instead. But the most of these uh, saturated ones are solid because the structure is very compact and then it holds this molecule together and that makes it a solid. That's why most animal fats are actually solid in it, uh, at room temperature. Now understand, at the saturated level, that's why we have all the animal fats, the ghee, the tallow, the coconut oil, uh, which is the only one that is not an animal fat, the, the lard, the sweat, all of them are coming in as saturated. Okay. On the unsaturated uh, side, we have olive oil. So olive oil is part of the unsaturated oils. And it is monounsaturated. I hope you understand already what I mean by monounsaturated. And most of the uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids that are coming from the industries, the canola, uh, the sunflower, the safflower, the cotton seed oil, the sesame, the corn oil, all these, whether solid or liquid, they're actually unsaturated. Okay? So I need you to get that difference. Now, we say it when you have a double bond in the structure, it starts to bend, making it very unstable. But most importantly, when you introduce a double bond, this double bond is unstable because it is it doesn't have maximum numbers of hydrogen ions. 
and it, this double bond it's willing to, to, uh, to actually uh, give out the hydrogen ions or the electrons that are on this bond we call them the free electrons they are easy to excite and they're easy to just be given out and donated and that's what makes them very unstable okay so you need to understand any oil that has the double bonds is very unstable but i want you to know this the body has an ability to synthesize all this without having to take them through diets so the body can synthesize both the saturated and unsaturated fats and it does that because it uses it for different functions i want you to see this most times we demonize the unsaturated fats without understanding them because the body uses unsaturated fats to actually make different things one there's something called the myelin sheath on the nerve cells we have these uh, fats that are lying on the nerve cells and you realize those nerves that are lined by these fats that are called the myelin sheath they transmit impulses so fast so these are very important the reason why we put them here is because we want to improve on nervous transmission so the more myelinated they are the faster the transmission of nerve impulses and this myelination here apart from it being mostly cholesterol it also has unsaturated fats also the body uses unsaturated fats for brain development and function also for formation of uh, the cell membranes so this is how a cell membrane occurs uh, when you look at it uh, basically uh, the structure of the cell membrane in a, in a microscope so this is a lipid bilayer i know most of you who have studied biology know this the lipid bilayer basically these are the unsaturated uh, fatty acids so we have the head which is the glycerol and then we have the tails or the chains and you can easily see because of the double bonds these chains are actually bending so these are double bonds that are causing them to bend and that means that these unsaturated fatty acids are very important in formation of cell membranes and you see when they bend they create a space which will be used uh, for permeability of the membrane so they cause permeability of the membrane they can be used for uh, transmission of signals across cell membranes and all that so they are very important because they are part of our cell membrane so do not demonize them as such because even if you do demonize them the body still makes this the only challenge comes in uh, on unsaturated fats when you heat them or when you expose them mostly to light because remember these ones some of them are stable like are, are fairly stable like olive oil okay and they come through the diets but the body can still synthesize it whether you eat it or not so understand that now as you talk about the unsaturated fats because of the structure that makes them very unstable it means if you ever expose heat to this double bond there will be problems if you ever expose this to the lights for a long period of time there will be problems this is one of the reasons why olive oil and avocado oil they come in an amber colored bottle okay specifically olive oil but nowadays it's very adulterated and that's why i always tell you to let olive oil remain uh, for top dressing now look at it this way leave alone the saturated let's talk about the unsaturated we, which has more problems right on unsaturated fatty acids we have two they are classified into two we have the c's and we have the trans i know when i mention those names uh there's a lot of confusion and you know what i mean but this is the point we have the c's and the trans what is the difference so the the, the unsaturated fatty acids exist in two groups which you have the c's so this is a trans and this is a c's what is the difference when you have this double bond causing the hydrogen ions to be opposite to each other so one hydrogen ion is lower and the other is upper on the bond that is what we call the trans because it's a transverse so it's a trans but when you have the hydrogen ions being on the same side either lower or higher or upper sorry that is what we call the c's for the c's they are better off but the trans are the ones that are called the trans fats this is where margarine exists this is where margarine comes in and the trans are very dangerous they are very unstable and they're the ones that actually cause you a lot of problems in terms of uh, the heart attacks the clogging of arteries and all that so this is where the problem is coming in and the systemic inflammation that causes atherosclerosis later is coming from these trans fats and most of you are using them and i want you to know when the industries they love using these unsaturated fats okay so every uh, compound that's coming from the industries in terms of the seed stroke vegetable oils are actually unsaturated most of them are poly unsaturated fatty acids but they are coming from these unsaturated uh, fatty acids now look at it this way they are first of all they are very unstable and then they go through industrial processing we have the chemicals being added in there's a lot of heat being used to extract them because they are very minimal in the seeds let's say like uh, the corn oil we will need a lot of maize to extract 
uh, so much to actually feed the appetite that is coming from you people. So therefore, what do we do? We need to extract it completely and we have to use a lot of chemicals, the hexanes. We need to purify it using chlorine. We need to use the gumming agents and all that. And then we need to improve the shelf life so that they stay on the shelves for the longest period of time. So when you walk into a supermarket and you're busy looking for the most clear liquid uh, cooking oil, vegetable oil, written on 0% cholesterol, you're actually going the wrong side because those that clarity is not an indicator of health. Just because that cooking oil on the shelf is more clear and is more expensive, that does not indicate that this one is a healthy one. Always keep in mind that they're actually unsaturated and most of them are poorly unsaturated, multiple double bonds. So if they, are, they have multiple double bonds, their chance of oxidizing is very high, even on, small, uh, on slight heat. But look at you taking the french fries. In Kenya, they are called uh, chipomuitu. Those cooking oils are recycled over and over. Look at you making your, your, your fries at home. Look at you deep frying things. You are exposing these oils to a lot of heat, yet they came from industries where they are already heated. So if any case, possibly they are already oxidized and you are actually making it more worse by heating it again. And when they are cold pressed, they have no problem. But the problem is when you start heating them, now they get to oxidation level and now they bring you problems. So this is the structure of uh, the two. Not the two. This is the structure of uh, the unsaturated ones. So when you expose them to heat, heat exposes or uh, excites these electrons on that double bond and they form reactive oxygen species, which are basically radicals. When they form these radicals, and these radicals are the ones that are responsible for inflammation, for the cancers, for destruction of the mitochondria, where you start all these mutations. So these have to be avoided. Any cooking oil that has double bonds should never be exposed to heat. That's why we say extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil should always remain for the top dressing. Okay, And it's very rare to find avocado oil in, in our country. But for the uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil, nowadays it's everywhere. We even have plastic olive oil. Uh, olive oil packages in plastic containers are coming from a company that actually makes seed oils. It is not healthy. Do not be bought into that. Okay, You'd rather not use it anyway. But if you're using extra virgin olive oil that is in a glass container and it's an amber colored bottle, you can only use it for top dressing. Do not use it for heating because if you heat it, it will oxidize and that will be a serious problem. Okay, So these industries knew that. But industries are very clever. They know that you might come and, uh, and, and do these things. And I, I, I was reading a story about how we started uh, using these fats in our plates. These fats were actually used uh, to, to uh, lubricate heavy machinery during uh, industrialization. And then how they ended up in our plates, that's a bigger question that nobody ever answers. But when they got into our plates, of course, cases of heart attack and all these issues with diabetes, hypertension, they went up. But they never wanted to uh, t take this, uh, take uh, the blame. So these guys have actually funded the American Heart Association uh, from back then, okay, when it used to be a very small organization. So you can imagine all information that is coming from these uh, organizations is actually uh, justifying the use of vegetable oils. And we know very well there's no vegetable in those vegetable oils that you're using. It's a marketing strategy. All of them are seed oils. They come from seeds. So most of them that are coming from the industries, there's no vegetable. You mentioned in the comment section the vegetable that is actually in your favorite cooking oil. If there's none, you can even easily see. Even the corn oil is drawn on a corn, a ma the maize uh, with the cob. And then you, you go and buy it thinking that it's still the vegetable oil. So how, which vegetable is in that corn oil? Which vegetable is in canola? Which vegetable is in sunflower oil or sesame oil? Which vegetable is in cotton seed oil? Once you start asking this question, you'll realize it was just a lie because they know you think vegetable oils, the word vegetable is healthy, you run to buy them. And then they've told you that cholesterol is a problem. Yet I've told you there are multiple causes, uh, the multiple functions of cholesterol in the system, making vitamin D, which is the immune system, making these cell membranes and myelination of the nerve cells. Cholesterol is used to make uh, the cell membranes of every single cell in your body. It's actually used in muscles. Cholesterol can be used to synthesize a lot of things in the body, including sex hormones and the stress hormone. So all these are functions of cholesterol. But when they told you cholesterol is a problem and it clogs your arteries, you believed them. And yet the problem is the polyunsaturated fatty acids. So they used that strategy to basically demonize the use of saturated fats and actually bring in the marketing of the unsaturated fats. So they told you cholesterol is a problem and therefore anything that has 0% cholesterol is safe for you. That is not true. Okay, so run away from those seed oils that you buy in the supermarkets. If you go to the supermarket, please go for the animal fats. On the extreme, you can go for coconut oil, but tallow, uh, ghee, 
uh, lard, sweat. They are very good for cooking. They are stable. They cannot oxidize under high temperatures and you can use them for your cooking. Okay. Good. Now, so having known the difference between the saturated, saturated and unsaturated fats, having known that we cannot run away from the unsaturated fats, even if you want to, the body will still synthesize them. The ratio is what matters in the body. Having known the functions of the unsaturated fats, and now knowing that these unsaturated fats are the ones that are actually taken in the industry to make poorly unsaturated fatty acids that you end up using for cooking, you've known that. Now, I want you to see this, that industries use these unsaturated fats what they do is they know they are very unstable and they are very volatile and they are highly inflammatory. So what do they do? They add in hydrogen. So they pass it through hydrogen. When they pass it through hydrogen, they make it a little stable. So they reduce the number of double bonds. But the problem is they will form trans fats. So that hydrogenation ends up forming the trans. You see this? Ends up forming the trans fats. And this trans fat we've said already, that is the problem. So even with oxidation or oh, hydrogenation sorry even with hydrogenation of the unsaturated fatty acids you will still end up forming the trans fats and the trans fats are actually mostly solid at room temperature so they are very clever they imitated the saturated fats to bring you trans fats the margarine solid at room temperature the peanut butter that you people use okay the solid cooking oils that you're using you're thinking that solids are now safer because of this they are still trans fats so any solid that is actually a seed oil any solid form is a trans fat including margarine and you're feeding your children a lot of margarine and peanut butter thinking that those that peanut butter has peanuts in them there's no peanut in those peanut butter you've seen the advertisements for a margarine that a child takes this margarine today and tomorrow they are growing taller and you think that is very healthy you're frying the brain of your children you're frying the system of the children making them very inflammatory and then you start wondering where they're getting asthma skin problems mental health issues nowadays autism is a very very common condition it never used to be okay so go back to using the animal fats now this process of heating and oxidizing this double bond is what we call the rancidity rancidity is the process where you heat or you expose it to light and this double bond oxidizes forming reactive oxygen species that actually are highly inflammatory to your system i believe that now you have the information so please go back to using animal fats stop using those cooking oils that are labeled on vegetable oils and zero percent cholesterol this debate has to come to an end because i also see that nowadays everybody is coming out trying to explain saturated and saturated fats and what they are doing is they are basically demonizing the unsaturated fats that's not right because the body makes it okay so don't demonize the unsaturated fats what you should do is you should demonize the polyunsaturated fatty acids that are coming from the industry and the trans fats that are coming from the industries that are already highly processed exposed to heat added in chemicals to make them stable stable in quotes and to improve or increase their shelf life okay that is what you should demonize so what cooking oil should you use go for ghee which is the most available make your own tallow the beef fat use the sheep tail fat some of you use the pork fat no problem animal fats use the camel fat use chicken and duck fat all those are saturated and they are very healthy so use them do not be scared of cholesterol and do not think that cholesterol is coming in to clog your arteries no this is the exact explanation of what of the chemistry behind that so once you've understood this you can now start talking about all these things avoid canola avoid sunflower oil avoid safflower oil avoid sesame oil avoid the nut oils palm oil has both the saturated and saturated uh, fatty acids okay so that one you can simply use it but as cold press but do not heat it again anything that is cold press use it but use it for top dressing Olive oil is unsaturated, you can use it, but for top dressing, okay? Avocado oil, the same thing. But the animal fats can be actually used for uh, for frying. So tallow, ghee, butter, okay? Sweat and lard, and then coconut oil can actually uh, be part of that also. But coconut oil is the only one that is not an animal fat, all right? So I hope you have understood uh, most of the things here, the concepts here. Now we can go into drill details in the next video.